Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, yeah, now we're going to talk about what Buke had to wade through yesterday. It was so funny, I tell you. But we'll get some explanations now. And uh, we're joined by uh, Adedamola Kuti. He's an engineer. He's, with the, he's a director for the Highway Southwest Zone Ministry of Works. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, I know you know by now, you know, uh, lots of perspectives about the developments with Lagos Ibarra Expressway. Well, the last two, three days, thereabouts, even till this morning, there's still a huge tailback in traffic on that area. So you've been to that area. We understand you're just back. But what can you tell us about the situation in terms of either construction and what's going on at the moment on that road? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, on that road, you see, in the past, work is ongoing. And uh, in the past few days, uh, specifically on Monday, we had very heavy rainfall almost throughout the day. And uh, it came with the attendance breakdowns of vehicles. And of course, it created a lot of backlog, which we were able to clear. And then on Tuesday, we experienced a similar thing. You know, at the um, diversion area, about three trucks, they were trying to navigate that area. Instead of giving way to the, to the other ones, you know, they were struggling and then they crashed into each other. And that created some problems as well. And uh, yesterday, you know, the one Vuki experience, there was actually a breakdown, you know, of an articulated vehicle. And you must consider the fact that this is at a peak period. A lot of people are moving out, those who are going to their respective offices, those who have traveled all night trying to assess Lagos, get into Lagos. So it was during the peak period. And then once you have a breakdown and if there is no rescue operation immediately, it creates a lot of backlog. So what, um, what is being put in place for the peak period? Because you know that when it's peak period like that, anything can go awry. Well, um, for us, like I said, the diversion area, contrary to what uh, I was told or what I heard on the telly, you know, where one of your reporters stated that ah, the diversion area is very, very narrow. No, the diversion area is wide enough to take two vehicles at the same time. So what we are planning to do now, I've already told my people in Lagos, it'll be continuous, especially during this period, we'll carry out palliative work on that stretch at night. So that by the time people come in in the morning, it becomes a, a bit smoother for them to drive on, you know? So because once you have a rough surface, it slows down traffic. And then you see, this is rainy season. Anytime you have heavy rain, you know, at times it comes in with a lot of sand deposits and blocks all those holes on the bridge. So most of our people, once they drive in towards that area and see water, you know, they will slow down. So once you slow down, these are things, but we'll continuously, we'll be desilting all those things and then be carrying our palliative, palliative work at night. All right, because I was wondering, since we know that uh, the rains will be here, there'll be traffic build up, one wonders if we uh, didn't prepare. Is there anything that's been done to prevent those sand from flowing in before you then go ahead with the desilting? No, it's, it's a natural thing. You know, like it rains, of course we have our drains, and any time, and you know a lot of people, we have a lot of orcas around that area, they sell pure water, sell this, but it's a continuous exercise. Our people are on ground to do that continuously. So any time you have this kind of incidents, you have a free flow. Mm. I'm sure that the people in Lagos oh, yeah. who <laughs> certainly want to get their questions in. I know. <laughs> it's over now to you, Buki. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Malpe. Um, I'd like to, um, you know, respond to your observation about the diversion area being uh, not being narrow. Yes, indeed, it is narrow because um, the portion is 
is so small that you cannot contain the high volume of vehicle vehicles that now have to access it. So indeed, it is narrow. I think you should take more looks at uh, visuals of uh, you know traffic congestion. Now, the concern about commuters on the road, uh, Mr. Kuti, is that um, the federal government didn't plan properly for this rehabilitation work for that portion of the road. Had it thought out, you know this whole uh, routine, there are alternative routes on both sides of the expressway, the alternative routes that leads to Kara, where there's an exit point, you know, at the diversion portion, and the alternative route on the other side that, you know, also leads to OPIC. You know, so why wasn't there some form of grading done on those portions of the exit route so that at least commuters have uh, two alternatives besides the main expressway itself? Yeah, thank you very much, Bukili. Uh, sorry for what happened yesterday. I really empathize with you. Uh, but let me still confirm and state very, very clearly that that diversion area is not narrow. An area that can take two vehicles at the same time is not narrow. We know you are coming on the highway that has like three, four lane. And then when you get to the diversion area, it's reduced to two. So you don't consider that as narrow. Now, uh, the area you consider as an alternative is not an alternative because that area is not part of the express, it's an edge road, this is rainy season. Once it rains, you can't even use it. Bookie should take time to go and check. You know, it's an edge road, this is rainy season, nobody can use an edge road during the rains. And it couldn't you know, have because made of the sun. You couldn't hmm? have made it usable? Like Maybe put some laterite, if you, uh, if make you, it a, a little more. I mean, you people no, are the engineers. No, if you put laterite, you see, the only thing that can make it motorable is to put asphalt. Uh -huh. well, you understand no, me? Maybe not asphalt. And then, uh, what about gravel? No, even if you do it, this is rainy season. You know, the soil is so, the, the way some of them is, is for that area, very clay area. So you can't even drive it. Ordinarily, even if you are not stopping them, motorists will have been making use of it. So it's not an alternative. But what we know is that the diversion area which we have created, it's a moving traffic. Like I mentioned, it is a construction zone, and you're moving at about 30 kilometers per hour, 20 kilometers per hour, you'll get to your destination. But at times, some of these things do happen, breakdowns, you know, accidents, and the rest. So people should just be very disciplined give way, allow other vehicles, move in quietly, and we'll be out. You see, people should just be very disciplined. That doesn't exactly no. go with Lagos traffic <laughs> or Lagos drivers in traffic. Um, you know, was there any other preparation? And this is drawing from Bookie's question. Mm. If you say that that particular, um, what looked like an alternative was not really, or is not really an alternative, and knowing the uh, way Lagos drivers, I, I, I hate to generalize, but knowing the indiscipline that we, we find on Lagos roads, did we think that there was going to be any alternative to ensure that at this particular point, on this particular road, for the duration of this job, this project, uh, that people maintain some sort of discipline, that there are officers on that road making sure that people understand that this is different. You, you can be in discipline on the rest of the rest of Lagos, but not on this particular axis. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you see, like I mentioned earlier, I was on that road last week. I met with the Commissioner of Police in Ogun State on the security aspect of it. I had discussions with him, and uh, he assured us of adequate security with his men. I also met with the corridor commander, met with uh, the sector commander in Ogun State, you know, for assistance. And of course, I spoke with the sector commander in Lagos to continue to assist the corridor commander, as well as the um, trace commander in Lagos. So they are, they are there, we'll continue to engage them. It's a continuous thing, you know, and we want to appeal to our people. It's an appeal that we all know that this is a construction zone. Whatever we are doing is for the betterment of the society. And whichever way, within the next few weeks, we'll be off from that area. Well, Mr. And then Kutsi, we can move forward. Yeah, but Mr. Kutsi, 
If, if you didn't consider those alternative uh, routes that I, cons that I mentioned earlier, if you didn't consider them alternative routes before, I wonder if you now consider them alternative routes because the federal government now has a greater problem on its hands because of the laser fair manner in which commute, uh, motorists are now plying the one-way traffic on the Ibadan route of the expressway where they now come out at the diversion point. And this morning, what happened was nothing less of a confusion because those who are coming out at the other end to return to the Lagos end are sort of colliding with the, those who are on the right route. And then security operatives are now uh, collecting bribes from those who are joining uh, the one-way route at Arepo. So these are all of the problems uh, that you have to contend with on that road. So are you considering at least grading the CARA alternative and the OPIC alternative on both ends of the expressway? saying is that, you see, unfortunately, we are in the rainy season. If we were to be in the dry season, some of these things can be done, you know, at least as an emergency escape route. You understand? But right now, you cannot do that during the rainy season. You see, the, the rainy season is there, and then there's nothing much we can do. We are trying as much as possible to, to, to reduce the distress people are passing through there. But then, whatever the situation is, we'll continue to engage, we'll continue to appeal to you to make use of this diversion area that has been created for this purpose. And then, of course, once you move, you get out of this traffic. So I'm sure it's, it must have been in the works for quite some time, months. I, I don't know if years, but clearly months. Yes, it's a rainy season, but rainy season is not all through the year. So why didn't maybe you have a plan to have asphalted that road, sort of? And I'm talking about the point where people can do a U-turn, especially people who want to go back into Lagos, because that's what causes a lot of the confusion. At the end of the day, they end up stopping or at least uh, blocking those who are leaving Lagos. And when they do the U-turn or try to do the U-turn, they obstruct people trying to come into Lagos from that Long Bridge area. So clearly, it doesn't look like a lot of plan or planning was put into this, because maybe the road may have been asphalted before the rain started, because you knew that at this time we're going to be ready to do that. So was there enough planning really into all of this? Got it. There was enough planning. And uh, you see, like we mentioned earlier, this is towards, of course, entering Lagos. This particular place you are talking about is not part of Lagos Ibado. It's not, an, it's not part of our highway. It doesn't belong to us. It was probably created by maybe a community somewhere around there. And it's difficult, of course, once for us, once we create a diversion for people and for motorists to make use of. You see, additionally, people now go about creating their own. And even this OPIC that Buki mentioned, eh, the OPIC one will encourage drivers to drive against traffic. Because once you get towards that OPIC area, you want to enter into inbound Lagos and create a kind of confusion there. You know, so, you see, all these areas... Pardon me, Mr. Kuti, if that, um, if, the, if the route under the Carab course, Bridge had been fixed, uh, pardon me, asphalt, I don't know who is going to be at the cost. I mean, this is part of making life easier for people. And I think that, I imagine that is the goal. That is the ultimate goal. Because you know how harrowing it's been for a lot of people coming into Lagos from different parts of the country. In this past few months, that construction has been ongoing. Now this has made the bad situation even worse. So I imagine it, couldn't, it wouldn't be hard to have some sort of, uh, you know, extra provision to fix that route under the Cara Bridge, I'm saying. So if people are coming from the alternative route, they can then link with that uh, other route under the Cara Bridge and do a U-turn and join the expressway that leads into Lagos. But I, I mean, maybe this is a little too late. Perhaps something can be done. I'm really appealing for something to be done. But just to be clear, will this project, and I'm talking about the whole stretch, be done before the end of this administration? Yeah. The whole stretch of Lagos to Ibadan, you know, will be completed. The main carriageway will be completed before the end of this year, 2022. So all of that route, you're talking about this one that is being done and from Ibadan up until Lagos will be done by December. Yeah, what we have on the Lagos end, that's the section one, 
what you have is um, the section from uh, the Oto Gate around that Secretariat area down towards Kara, and uh, out of which, as we speak, the section from the beginning that's around that Secretariat up to Otedola Bridge. In the next few days, we should be completing that and opening it to traffic, and then we'll move to another side. Then this OPIC area is just 1.3 kilometer. It will also be complete. So on this stretch, altogether, what you have is 6.1 kilometer. And then when you go towards section two, we have just less than about, uh, just about 20 kilometers that we have on both sides. And we are working very, very hard to ensure that uh, um, these two sections are completed. And of course, you may, it may also interest you to know that uh, we have created additional gangs. Ordinarily, we will have, because of our timing, we will have left uh, one gang operating between Old Toll Gate and Otedola Bridge. But because of the delivery date we have been given, we decided to include uh, um, this OPIC area. And that is where we are. So for us, we are working, we are working towards a completion date of 2022 December. You know, we know that the road has got to be done. We know that construction work has got to go. They have to see what they can do to finish up the road. At the same time, um, I know you've spoken about, even the last time you spoke, you mentioned how um, the, the construction workers, the ministry are factored in certain things, that they put in place measures to ensure that when you drive at 20, 30 kilometers per hour, you get to your destination. But that there is usually breakdown and those who are driving against traffic. Those two key issues affect what goes on there yeah. largely. So has there been a handshake between the ministry officials and perhaps uh, security agencies or whichever governments to ensure that they have tow vehicles or whatever they have to put in place to ensure that whenever there is a breakdown, it's attended to promptly. And then they arrest whoever drives against traffic because that is another headache entirely. Yeah, sure. I just told you, when I came back from Lagos last week, Mm -hmm. I met with all the agencies involved. I met with the Commissioner of Police, you know, for the security concerns along that route. Met with all this road safety. And then they have, even apart from that, Julius Becker itself has a twin truck. I have pictures there that I will show you, you know, some of those assistance we have also rendered to some of these agencies in terms of pulling off all these vehicles. So they are there. But what you see at times, even some of these trucks, they are over, heavily overloaded. And then when they want to climb the bridge, you know, they go slowly. And then you see a lot of other vehicles queuing behind them. Some of them, even instead of them to drive by the side, they drive at the center. And then every other person has to be queued up behind them. So these are some of the people who keep on, you know, engaging them from time to time. Because part of what caused that gridlock yesterday, there were a lot of people who drove against traffic from the night before up until the morning after, mm -hmm. they were all just there and then they were trapped in there. So when they keep saying, yes, they're going to do that, it's a different thing that plays out on a regular basis. So they may have told you that, but in many cases, it always remains to be seen if they are on ground all the time. But you also spoke about construction going on at night, uh, that they were going to provide security. Is that happening now? I haven't yeah. been through that night. No, like so. I mentioned to you, you see, the main construction itself cannot be done at night. In terms, even if it is done at night, eh, what we are just trying to save our time, it's not as if you finish your construction at night and open the road in the morning. You can only do maintenance work. Mm -hmm. And then this palliative work, like I mentioned to you, yeah. we shall carry out those ones in the night so that by the time people get there in the morning, it becomes smoother for them to, to move. Well, as you say, before this year, that's by December, this road should be over and done with. Sure. Well, we are working towards that. Well, we are working towards uh, that. we'll have to see um, all the other agencies and road users. We'll have to see what we can all do while the construction goes on so that we just uh, obey the traffic regulations and the traffic officials as much as we can such that you consider the next person who is driving so it's smoother for a lot of older people.